Hi, this is Dimitri Badyarov. Welcome back. I'm speaking to you from my workshop in The Hague, the Netherlands, as usual. And in this video, I want to speak about something that I'm really passionate about. And that is about taking the control of your career as a musician. So whom is this for? If you are a freelance a musician and you are also willing to organize your own projects, or if you are full-time employed, but you still like to play on the side because sometimes just how it is, you are not always welcome to express your musicianship if you are working in an orchestra and sometimes you just may feel that you want to have musical fun somewhere on the side. So if that is you, then you probably want to know how you fill the concert halls without having agents or connections with festivals or concert promoters or without having uh, grant subsidies or um, sponsors or backstage contacts, um, politics and all these kind of things. So you actually can do all this and can be completely self-sufficient as a, a creative professional, as a musician, but you need to know a few uh, things. And in this video, actually, I'm going to cover a few basics, extremely powerful basics, how you can successfully promote your own musical projects. So this is you and you are that talented, incredibly fine musician. You dedicated all your life to becoming that fine professional and you are thirsty for more uh, music, right? You are living in some city, wherever it is, Berlin, Madrid. And in that city, there is a beautiful concert hall, which you know you can uh, rent and you can go there and play. And this is the easiest part. The hardest part you may think is how you actually sell the tickets. That's right. So how do you sell the tickets? To rent the hall, it's easy. To fill the hall with people is a completely different story. Because if people don't know about how fantastic you are, about your fantastic program, they will just not, not come. They, will, they just don't know if that makes sense. So how do you let them know? You have to raise awareness about your existence, about your passion for music, about your forthcoming uh, musical projects. I hope that makes sense to you. Okay, now I'm going to share with you two completely different strategies about raising awareness about you as the as a musician okay so there are two strategies one is offline strategy and another one is online strategy i will speak first about the offline strategy because when i was living in japan in 2006 7 8 9 uh, 10, um, i was using these strategies to promote my own concerts and i did it profitably so you can announce your concert in a newspaper, magazine, radio, TV, or you can use flyers. So uh, if you are promoting your concert in a newspaper, if you have the newspaper announce your forthcoming evening and night before, it will have an effect, it will generate you a few tickets uh, sold. Uh, it is also an ex excellent way to position yourself as an authority in your area. You can use it later uh, for your uh, promotion. You can place adverts in magazines. So if there are magazines in your area spe specialized in that specific uh, field, uh, classical music, obviously, um, you can actually place an advert in those magazines. And a few people, quite a few people read those magazines and a few people will buy, definitely. Radio is super effective. So if you get the radio to announce your concert one evening before, it will generate quite many sales. Um, television, it's great if you are doing something original and something unusual, something quite different from other musicians, because then the chances are that the television will actually chase after you and they will ask um, to an interview or this kind of um, uh, things. And that is really exceptionally good for your positioning. So it will actually help you to promote more concerts in the um, uh, near future, or if there is a forthcoming concert, it will get announced and you will have uh, sales. So uh, potentially lots of sales. This is a very powerful flyers. Flyers is one of the very common methods. Probably you have been also using flyers to announce about your concerts, but you have to be very uh, selective about where you distribute those flyers, because if you spend your flyers in the wrong venues, people are not going to buy. So for example, 
just to give you a few examples of the wrong venues, if you are playing as a soloist or if you are playing with a string trio or quartet and you're distributing your flyers in the concert venue where there are thousands of uh, people but they come there to listen uh, opera or uh, symphonic programs, it doesn't mean that they are also interested in solo. You will, you maybe get a few sales, but chances that will be not many sales. If you distribute your flyers in cafes or uh, pubs, again, this is not going to generate you many sales, if any. If you are distributing your flyers in the venues which promote, uh, simil which host similar programs to yours, then it is very, very likely to give you a sufficient number of sales to justify this marketing strategy. So in my experience, 5,000 flyers distributed correctly, strategically would generate about 25 tickets sold. Not, doesn't sound like a big number of tickets sold for sure, but look, if you pay for 5,000 flyers about 49 euros, and if you sell tickets for 40 euros and then you generate uh, 1,000 euros. So essentially for 49 euros, you buy 1,000 euros. That's how it works. Of course, if you are not selling your tickets for 40 euros for higher or lower price, well, it gives you an idea still, if, even if you are selling the tickets for just one, one fourth of this price for 10 euros, it still makes sense financially. So it is a still a, a, a viable method of selling your tickets. There is another strategy online, which is by far more powerful than offline strategy. And I want to uh, speak about uh, Facebook in particular and how you can uh, leverage the power of Facebook to promote your musical projects. This is extremely powerful. So on Facebook, there are two kinds of, uh, well, more than that, uh, but uh, essentially two kinds of pages. There is a pr private, private page and there is also your uh, professional uh, page fun page, so to speak. There are also groups, but this is a little bit a different um, animal. So they are profiles and pages, and essentially you must have both. And I will tell you in a moment why you should have both. Oh, because you can create a post on Facebook. You can post a video, or you can post a just simple uh, a status update. And if you are doing this on your private profile, you cannot tell Facebook, hey, Facebook, show the status update or this video only to the people living in my city and you can even tell facebook hey facebook show this video only to the people living in the immediate vicinity of the concert hall where i'm going to perform you see how this is extremely powerful so you cannot do this on your private profile but you can do this, do this on your ensembles uh, page okay so you can pr create a video and you can create posts and you can tell Facebook, it is very important, you can tell Facebook to show those posts in a specific area because if you don't do this, chances are that your Facebook page will have 20,000 likes, but if these likes coming from uh, Spain or Mexico or um, uh, Argentina or Brazil or wherever, and you live in Germany, people are not going to come to your concert, does it make sense to you? So. This is why you need to boost those posts and tell Facebook, hey, show this only to people living in my city. Uh, this is extremely powerful. This is targeting, okay? The next thing, of course, you can use Instagram, you can use um, YouTube, you can also use uh, your blog, it is also a very uh, powerful tool. Um, but if you are producing just one video a day on Facebook and the video doesn't have to be long, it has to be, it can be 15 seconds, can be 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, and you can, and then repurpose this video. So if you create just one minute video every day and you can post it on your Facebook profile, on your Facebook page, you can post it on Instagram, on YouTube, on blog post, on email, and also create an ebook later out of that how, because you can actually have your video transcribed and typed as a text. So essentially from just one piece of content, one minute long, you create at least seven pieces of content. And now the magic of numbers starts here. If you're creating seven videos a week, it creates minimum 49 pieces of contact per month. This turns into 1,470 pieces of content. And in one year, this turns into 17,640 pieces of content, which people in your area have seen. If you do this, 
even for just 90 days, I guarantee you that people will start asking for your autographs when you walk on the streets of your town. This is how it is extremely powerful. Next, once you have created awareness about your existence and about your passion for music, by the way, excuse me, I forgot one thing. What are you speaking about in those videos? Sometimes I see musicians really petrified by the idea that they have to produce the content. It's very easy to just speak about anything you're passionate about. Just like I'm now passionate about uh, this business side of your creative uh, career. Does it make sense to you? So you can speak about your instrument, what inspired you to become a violinist or a violist or whatever else you are playing. You can speak about uh, interpretation ideas about a specific composer or a program, what is special in that program, why you have chosen that program, what you want to share with your fans. It doesn't matter what is important that you share your passion for what you are doing and people can connect, can relate to you if you are passionate and they see you as a, hey, this is an alive being, this is an interesting somebody, something for once really, really different and people will be able to relate to you. So it's very easy to produce uh, content. It's just take it out of your mind. You don't have to think, overthink, just put the camera in front of yourself and just boom, speak. One minute, that's it, done. Publish it on the Facebook, turn it into uh, Instagram, YouTube, blog post, email, and later ebook. And this is just how it works. And in one year, you will have 17,640 pieces of content. And by the way, they will be online forever and ever. Next, are you following me? Next, you have to start actually, you, you, uh, create, you, you create this awareness about yourself, about your mm, career, about your passion for music. Then you rent the hall, you invite people, you can tell Facebook now, Facebook show invitation to my concert to all the people in my area who have been watching 25% uh, uh, of my video or 50% of my video or 75 or 95% of my video. Imagine how that is powerful. Imagine if somebody was watching 95% of your video, are they extremely interested in what you are doing of course because you they would be not watching the video 95 percent of it does it make sense to you look if you if this video was not making any sense to you you would not be watching it now right but since you are watching it means that you are interested so it's, it will be the same thing with your fans in your city and then you can tell facebook hey facebook I'm going to play a concert on such and such a date, show invitation to everybody in this area who watched 75% or 95% of my video. Are those people very likely to buy your tickets? Of course they are. It is extremely powerful. So then they are buying your tickets and the next thing happens very important is that you have to keep contact information about those people. So when you are working using only offline strategies, this might be a little bit difficult for you to get contact information. But if you are using off online strategies, then you probably will be selling online your tickets. And I strongly recommend you are selling the tickets online. It's so easy nowadays. And when somebody buys your ticket online, you are guaranteed to get their email address, maybe also their name, and maybe also their phone, uh, mobile phone number or something like that. No, maybe even their postal address if you want to deal with the shipping physical tickets, which I really do not recommend, but you can do that too. So, and then you can actually re-engage them later. So when you play a concert and then you decide, okay, I want to play another concert in one month from now. So you can actually send an email to all the people who are in your list, telling them, hey, I'm going to play again and they are going to come. And here's another magic of numbers. 20% of your fan base are guaranteed, almost guaranteed, to show up at anything you are organizing. These were my normal conversion rates, show up rates. So I had in Tokyo only 500 fans. I knew that 100 people would come in at my, my concerts unless I really screwed up somewhere there or um, organizing process, which I did in the beginning. So don't worry if you make a couple of mistakes, don't let, you know, don't get stuck because of this. Just keep doing this stuff really works and you will be doing running your career profitably. I guarantee you, absolutely. So 20% uh, will show up. Imagine if you have 1,000 funds after a year or uh, maybe a less than one year, you have 1,000 funds, then you can be sure that 200 people will show up. And if you are selling tickets at 20 euros, 
Well, you have just generated 4,000 euros. And you know if you are renting a venue for 1,000 euros, you still have 3,000 euros in um, profits, more or less. Okay, that's how it works. Um, well, in my case, I was selling tickets uh, in Japan, so the ticket were, uh, in Tokyo, tickets were uh, more expensive than in countryside, naturally. So uh, normally it would be around 40 euros per ticket, an average price, an average. Okay? They were m much cheaper and also much more expensive, but an average price was around 40 euros, which would mean 8,000 euros. So that's how it works. The takeaway for you, you do not need agents, mafioso contacts in the industry, elbow politics, you do not need concert promoters, you do not need sponsors, you do not need budget uh, subsidies, I mean. What you need is funds. People are really, really, really in love with what you are doing. And I have just shared with you all these incredibly powerful strategies to so just go and apply them and you will be doing absolutely extremely and great. That's my wish for you. Thanks for watching. This was Dmitry Badyarov. And if you like this video, if it makes sense to you, if it inspires you to take control of your career, you can do this. Then, well, like this video, uh, share it, share it with your colleagues. Very important. If you are trying to organize, uh, create a trio or a string quartet or a quintet, if every member in your band does this, then combined you can have easily 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 8,000 funds easily. And remember, 20% of those funds are very likely to show up at anything you organize. And you will be doing extremely well and probably potentially a lot better than anyone else with promoters and with agents and with sponsors. It works. All the best. And I look forward to speaking to you in the next video. Thank you.